Hello and welcome to today's Worlds 2022 video where we're going to cover the final four mid laners. Down in the description you have three links, Twitter, Discord, YouTube memberships. Twitter and Discord, join those, follow those. Um, YouTube memberships, $3 a month, you get a badge in the comment section. $10 a month, you get extra content including the badge. Um, the next members only video will come out tomorrow. It'll be about NFL American football. Um, that's the sort of content you're going to get in addition to my league predictions. So, um... More people saw the jungle video than the top lane video yesterday, which is nice. So if you watch the jungle, the top lane video came out the day before. It's on the world 2022 playlist. Now, um, looking at these and writing them on here, we have some stark uh, differences between the players, right? Statistically. And we're going to kind of just go over, you know, what these stats may say. Obviously, I mean, you could look them up yourself at Games of Legend. But the point is um, trying to interpret what they mean. Um and what we can expect this week. So, Chovy, I'm not going to lie. Chovy, I believe, is the best player in the world outright. I think he is the best player mechanically across everybody that's playing this game professionally. He leads in KDA. He leads in farm. Now, KDA 7.1. Zekka's behind him at 5.9. And then we have Yagao and Faker at 4.5 and, and 4, respectively. Um... The mid lane matchup between Gen G and DRX is going to be more contested than the JDGT1 matchup, at least in my opinion, when it comes to laning. Um, Chovy doesn't die much, uh, definitely does his job at a high level, 9.9 .9 CS per minute. He is the guy that farms better than anybody else in the game right now. Like, he is going to get ahead, you know, how much remains to be seen, but he is going to get ahead in the majority of his matchups. He's going to get farm. To his detriment sometimes, that is without a doubt. Zekka has done very well in farm. When you compare Zekka and Chovy to Yagao and Faker, I mean, even, well, Faker, I mean, is two and a half CS per minute behind Chovy over the entire game. Um, we've seen Faker have moments this past, you know, I mean, at Worlds where he has shown some outplays on the Akali and things like that, which we'll get into, but when it comes to getting his gold and getting, you know, fed, it's just not the case. Faker is taking on a very supportive role with this team. He is not farming very much. I mean, what, two and a half per minute. I mean, at 10 minutes, we're looking at a 25 CS gap between Chovy and Faker on average, regardless of what the matchup is. And most of these matchups are pretty standard. The mid lane is not too eccentric at this, at this world. So it's pretty crazy. Um, even Zekka has a two lead. He'd be 21 ahead. Yagao, he's going to be eight ahead on average. Like, and obviously this is averages. Matchups may make this change, but it's really just, I mean, he's not getting a lot of farm. He's taking a very supportive role. I mean, I can't stress that enough. Like, Chovy doesn't get around. A lot of people say that. And, um, I mean, then you look at KP and you say, well, actually... Interestingly enough, he's getting around as much as Yagao is. Their KPs are almost identical. Zekka is slightly ahead of both Chovy and Yagao, so giving up 0.4 farm to be 4% more relevant in fights. Maybe Zekka does, you know, go to the side lane a little bit more than Chovy. But Yagao, like I went over this yesterday with Jungle, and I, I mean top lane is different because top laners will split push and things like that, and mid laners will as well. But um, if you're not farming, you got to be fighting or dealing damage. I mean, the thing is that we don't have a stat to determine how much proximity and pressure actually gets you. I wish we did, but we don't. So all we have are these stats. And if your KP is the same as a guy that's farming 1.7 CS per minute more than you, that's a problem. Now, is JDG mate, is JDG's more skirmish heavy? So is there just going to be a fight in the side lane between, with uh, 369 Kanavi versus the top jungle of the other team and Yagao's just doing whatever he's doing? Sure. But if Yagao is not in that fight, then what is he doing? He should be farming. Should not have 8.2. He should have higher. And everybody's playing the same champ. So the champ thing is not an excuse either. Um, Faker, 55.2. So Faker is not getting into fights. He's not farming. That's bad. That's very bad. Like, there's no kills on the return of giving up all this farm. What I found interesting, though, when we get into damage percentage, is Faker actually deals 
more damage relative to his team than Yagao. But then not only that, I looked into it a little deeper. You know, I just went over a couple more columns, or one more for that matter. And um, Baker has a higher damage per minute than Yagao. So he's got less farm, but he's got more damage in fights. But he's in less fights. The kill participation is a lot lower. It's a very weird situation here. Like, actually, Baker is dealing more damage than Yagao to champions. But he's in 7% less fights. So he's actually, you know, more impactful in team fights than Yagao has been so, thus far. Um, and then somebody that sticks out in that category, obviously, is uh, Chovy, 27.8. So Zeke has a higher KP, um, but the lowest damage percentage. And Chovy has the highest at 27.8. He's got 4.4% higher than Faker. And, you know, you look and you say to yourself, well, if Zek is in the most fights, how is he dealing the least amount of damage? Especially when Kingen and Pioshek aren't dealing damage. This pretty much says it's Deft and Barrel, which we saw a lot of Heimerdinger out of Barrel. So he's dealing more damage than your average support ever has. He's dealing probably 15 to 20% more than maybe Pioshek is. But... At the same time, it's still a weird thing, especially because Zeka is dealing so much damage um, in the side lane. We saw him literally destroy Scout in the side lane in Game 5. That's going to stick out for a long time. Um, that may be hard for, for Scout to, you know, well, Scout won a Worlds, right? So, I mean, it's like, oh, well, I won Worlds and then I got destroyed by Zeka. But I still won Worlds. Does Zeka win Worlds? I mean, let's be real. But at the same time... Um, if they're the underdog, right? So we got to give them the credit they, they have earned. Now, 15 minutes. I found this interesting. Yagao is behind at 15 minutes on average. This is the laning phase. This is the 1v1 with a little bit of jungle intervention. Yagao on average, 14 down, 270 gold, nearly 500 XP. Kanavi obviously farms a lot more than everybody else. When he's swinging by, he's taking some XP. He's taking some gold. He's taking some CS. But with Faker, it's not quite as um, excusable because owner is not getting that farm. And if he is, he's still not like up to where Kanavi is because Kanavi's at seven and, and owner was at like five and a half, five point six yesterday, right? Faker down 400 gold, 10 CS, 500 XP. So he's down 400 gold at 15 minutes on average and 10 CS, which is actually not that bad. But then again, that's relative to who he's been playing. You're going to see him playing um, Yagao. But if he gets the finals, Chobi or Zeka over thus far, he is going to be in a deeper hole than 10 CS. Um, that is at least based off of these numbers thus far. Now, at 15 minutes, the opposite side, we have the two better laners in Chobi and Zeka so far. Chobi, 338 gold up, 10 CS, 170 XP. So he's not getting a high XP, you know, lead. That's for sure. It's barely anything. Um, the farm, 10 CS at 15 minutes. Not overly significant. Over the entire game, though, Chovy does not stop farming. That's always going to happen. Gold, 300. I mean, that's not a ton either. That's like, what, one one little minor piece of an item. Um, Zeka, kind of in the middle here. 70 gold up, so that's nothing. Negative two farm and 231 uh, XP in the hole. So Zeka's kind of in the middle of the a road there. In the mid to late game, he ends up split pushing making up his gold, making up his farm, and ending up, you know, surpassing the likes of Yagao and Faker in terms of gold um, based on uh, farm. Now, um, look at the champions. Mid lane is, de like I said, is the is the um, least interesting role so thus far at the tournament. There's not been a lot of, um, you know, diversity. It is the Silas show. It's the only champion everybody has played. I'm going to kind of move my shoulder here. I know you can't read Oriana way at the end, but I wasn't going to put Oriana and Zeka here just for one. So we'll get into that in a second. But Silas is the only champion everybody's played. Silas is the most played by both Yagao and Zeka. Silas is OP as hell. Um, I think it is 17 and 6 at this tournament against Azir. Akali and LeBlanc. Nobody's played LeBlanc yet in this tournament on this list. They all obviously are capable of playing LeBlanc, but that's not the point. Um, we're talking about this meta and what people are playing right now. Could they pull it out? Yes, but they haven't been willing to yet, which tells me that it's sus. So, um, Silas is OP. Silas is going to get banned. 
Silas is going to get banned or it's first pick. If you're not first picking Silas right now, you're kind of crazy because there's no pick. It's kind of like the Aatrox thing. Um, there is no pick right now, thus far at the tournament, that is better than 50-50 against Silas than Zach. There's no pick other than Zach. And that's pretty ridiculous, right? Because Zach stinks. Why Why would we pick Zach? Well, Froggy, Zach went one and one It's a super small sample size. It means absolutely nothing. But I think the point is there is nothing going into Silas right now that has worked. So Silas has to be banned or first pick. Um, Azir, most played by Chovy. Azir is the second most common pick. We're seeing a lot of Azir when Silas is banned because Azir is very strong. Um, gives you some late game insurance. It's got great CC with the Sharima Shuffle. Got some range. There's value there. Now for Faker, Akali is his most pick. Akali seems like the bait pick at this world, as well as Victor, for that matter. Um, but Akali has has definitely not been very strong. Some people have been able to have outplays on it. Even Faker himself have had outplays on it. But so often we've seen it into Silas and absolutely get demolished. It's not a good pick. I don't think it's a good pick, frankly. Um, so... Akali and Azir are the two picks that we've seen three players play. Faker has not played Azir. Why? I mean, maybe it's been banned every time. I really haven't. I didn't look. I don't look back at bans when I'm looking at this. But um, Faker obviously can play Azir. I mean, he's played for 100, 100 years. He's he can play Azir. Um, Yagao hasn't played Akali. Yagao has only played three champions: Silas, Azir, and Talia, which tells me and and. You know, Yagao does have champion um, pool issues. You ban Silas against him. You pick Azir. Is he going to pull out the Talia? Talia is the only one that's willing to play it. And honestly, Talia has not been that good at this tournament. So is he going to pull out the Akali, the Victor, something else? I think that's possible. Um, Victor obviously is a very, um, geez, I got something in my eye, a very um, common counter to Azir for the late game. Oh, geez, I got something in my glasses. Um, very common pick, but at the same time, I think Victor, Victor has stunk in the majority of its matchups. Um, some other one-offs. So we got Yagao, Talia, uh, Baker's going to pull out the Lissandra, obviously a supportive pick. Definitely fits into that 7.4 CS per minute. Um, we saw the Soraka be a possible counter to it. So, and Soraka is kind of a fringe pick right now. You may not want to pick Lissandra because that's a possibility. Um, Chovy. Ari, Rise, Yone. Rise was very sus at the time, but he did very... The laning phase was a, was a troublesome part for Chovy, um, but he got through that. Very relevant in team fights. Couple triple kills, I believe, and then ended up with like 11 or 12 kills and um, looked great, but people are overlooking his laning phase. That was pretty sus, to say the least. Um, Ari is Chovy's pick. He has not played it a lot this world. Um... Ari is not a great pick right now, so if he plays it, maybe he can make it work, but I would not just see him pick it and be like, well, he's going to do great on it. It's his Ari. It's like, no, um, that's, we got to be real here. The Ari is not being picked by everybody for a reason. Ooh. Uh, Yone, another weird pick. Um, we see it a lot in top lane and, and sometimes in mid and Chovy's pulled it out. We've seen Zeus pull it out against Aatrox in top. Are we going to see Yone be picked? in mid and be relevant in team fights against that Aatrox. I mean, remains to be seen um, if it's just a laning pick or it's a team fight pick. I don't get into the weeds that far. Um, and then lastly, Zeka Oriana. Oriana has been barely picked at all in this tournament. Not a very good pick. Um, so I don't, I really don't expect that to happen, but if you see an Azir and you see a Victor ban, I could see Oriana being picked. Obviously we even saw some fringe Syndra picks, um, Showmaker pulling one out, um, and Mission doing it a couple times. So, you know, that control mage box, right? The Victor, Azir, Syndra, Oriana. I mean, it could always happen, right? Um, but that's it for my mid lane, uh, final four. Comment down below with what you think. Like the video if you like it, subscribe to the channel for daily League of Legends content, share it with your friends, um, become a YouTube member, follow me on Twitter, join the Discord, and thank you for watching.